Nicotine is, you know, the driver of use of tobacco, including e-cigarettes, because it's so addictive. Um, it activates the dopamine reward pathways in your brain, just like when you get a like on a Facebook page or you get a text message from your best friend, like that activates that reward pathway with a little burst. Um, nicotine does the same thing. Um, and in the e-cigarettes, what we're seeing is with the extremely high level of nicotine in the most current generation, there's a lot of activation of that pathway um, such that people are not finding joy in other things. So they've actually found that kids are becoming addictive and they used to like to play soccer or play with a puppy, but that can't activate the pathway the same way that high level of nicotine is. So that's one of the concerns and what some research is really focusing in on now. What my work has really been looking for are changes across the body that inhalation of these chemicals, uh, what they cause. So we've talked about, about that word aerosol. So the e-cigarette, the battery heats up a coil that's in this liquid. And that liquid has no water in it, which is a common misconception that it's water vapor. Um, it's actually propylene glycol, which is similar to antifreeze, um, glycerin, and then nicotine are the three big chemicals. And so that's what we've primarily been studying. And they get heated by this coil and then pulled through a mesh to create a particulate cloud, which is an aerosol, but most people call it vapor. So e-cigarette vapor is uh, the common terminology. So in our work, we've exposed mice to these aerosols for days, weeks, months to try and come up with the answers of what use of these e-cigarettes is going to lead to health-wise in the long run. So going back to what John said, you know, the tobacco use in general causes stroke, heart disease, lung disease, just changes across the body, changes in the skin, DNA. Um, and so we're really just looking broadly to see what e-cigarettes will do as well. And I've been shocked to see that these mice who are exposed for months, we can find changes in every part of the body that we've looked. So this concept of them being safer because they have fewer chemicals and that they have like a shorter list of known carcinogens, I don't think it's gonna be pan out to be that much safer than conventional tobacco. It's gonna to be different. They're gonna cause different diseases. So talking about decision-making, uh, where is the US policy on nicotine in these modern products? Does it align with what's going on in the rest of the world? Uh, well, uh, for e-cigarettes, uh, uh, England only allows um, 20 milligrams uh, in the um, e-cigarette, whereas is what, 59, yep. something like that. Uh, so, you know, that's threefold the level uh, that's, that's allowed in it. And Australia doesn't allow any nicotine in their e-cigarettes at all. I told them to go and test it, though, because, yes, <laughs> because, no, absolutely. because everyone's using them. <laughs> oh, no. And so, they can get them shipped in from overseas. So. I, the, uh, I said, you can't trust the industry. And so people are seeing, uh, seeing the same sort of nicotine use behavior that was seen in my father's age when, uh, before we knew about the hazards, when people were smoking every 20 minutes. Uh, and they can use these uh, jewels and, and other products, smoke and, and uh, enjoy, uh, in ways that people can't see them. They don't, doesn't smell, so they can pop them back in and so they can use them indoors. Uh, and it's been difficult for people to identify that they are being used. Yeah, wow. And I think we'd be excited if the FDA would extend their nicotine concentration limits to the e-cigarette oh, side. Yeah. And as John mentioned, yeah, some of the smaller e-cigarettes, they're equivalent to one pack of cigarettes worth of nicotine. But um, one of the most popular ones right now is called the Flume, the Flume Float. And it holds the equivalent of 13 packs of cigarettes. And um, I recruit human subjects to study and when I'm interviewing them and asking about how many they're using and they'll go through one per week. So they're using 13 packs of cigarettes per week. So equivalent of two packs per day smokers. So it's really impressive how much they will use these devices because they can just use them continuously. 
What are you finding in your research about the effects of the use of these products on brain and GI tract? Our most recent study um, found that in the brain of mice that had used for a month, which is the equivalent of several years in a human, or a mouse that had uh, inhaled these aerosols for three months, which is the equivalent of a couple decades. Um, and as John mentioned, we use these mice because they can give us an idea of what's gonna happen in the long run. We found the inflammation in the brain, especially in these areas where you form memories and where your mood is controlled. And so it's very worrisome for these e-cigarettes to cause changes in behavior and mood, such as anxiety, depression. Um, so that's the main brain findings we found. And then in the GI tract, so the colon in particular, we found a lot of inflammation in the wall of the GI tract. And what this looks like is inflammatory bowel disease, of which you know many people are affected, and this looks like it's gonna be a driver, e-cigarette use. And another concerning part of that is when your GI tract, when the wall is not really well sealed, it allows the stuff in the lumen, such as the bacteria that we're colonized with, you know, our food, the processing, to cross over into the bloodstream and sort of drive inflammation across the body. One of the key protective measures for public health is likely to be intervening on this type of advertising. And so Laura, can you tell us a little bit about how social media comes into play here? Why might social media be a real facilitator to us um, rethinking adv advertising strategies, particularly to youth. Absolutely, because um, you know the tobacco playbook is very well known in terms of placing advertisements near schools, um, anywhere kids are going to be, make them sexy, make them cool. And so, if you look at the e-cigarette advertisements, you know from 2010 to 2018, really. They did all those things. So they had young people like partying. Um, so they had those, they were allowed to put them in magazines, other places, but in the same era of social media, a lot of young people, you know, they don't look at magazines. They don't look, you know, even at the TV, they're on uh, Instagram, TikTok, um, Facebook. And the e-cigarette companies actually would hire influencers so they'd get people who have a huge number of followers to start talking about how cool e-cigarettes were, how they great they made them feel, how safe they were. To model them. Yes, yeah. to model them. But so the, the BAT, which is one of the big tobacco industries, after the Juul campaign came out, they, they put a $1 billion amount in their budget to purchase influences yep. wow. on social media. Wow. Because they know it works, and this is a way to reach our kids from 10 to 30, really. Um, and this is the best way to get them, is through their friends and the people that they admire. So it's been very interesting. And as you know, we've been glad that advertising in more normal areas has been banned. It's a little bit harder to control the influencer sort of state of being. So let's talk a little bit more about why the focus on e-cigarettes, given that we know there's harm also with tobacco and traditional cigarettes, why is it so important in this moment in history to really be thinking about Juul and some of these other products? Well, I mean, the history of, uh, of nicotine use uh, is all about initiation because it's so hard to quit that, it, you know, that's like the, they say the California the Hotel, everyone checks in and no one checks out, right? It's, a, uh, it's so hard to get people to quit. So it all becomes on, it comes into initiation. And so initiation occurs only under the age of 24 years. No, I shouldn't say only, 98% uh, of anyone who becomes a regular user has used by the time they're 24, with, uh, with probably 85% first trying under the age of 18. Uh, and that hasn't changed. Uh, so I was saying what's happened in high schools on smoking. It went from 30% down to 6% in the last 20 years, a huge decline. So 
the industry is going to be out of business if this keeps up. So in, when we had, when they got it right and they started the big takeoff with Juul and the, the high nicotine cigarettes in 2017, and they've got it back up to 30% of the young people. That's why uh, we're focused on it. Because e-cigarettes is the industry's way to keep people addicted to nicotine. One thing I think that the public doesn't know that much about is that tobacco does cause anxiety and depression. So a lot of people reach for a cigarette because they feel like it calms them down and it treats their anxiety, but they don't realize in the long run, it actually drives anxiety and depression. And that's another thing that we're really worried about on the e-cigarette side because it's activating those same pathways. So when you ask, like, you know, why are we so worried about e-cigarettes? It's because, you know, it is a gateway into tobacco use, nicotine addiction. We believe that these people are going to be addicted for decades and that inhaling this cloud of chemicals containing the nicotine itself is going to drive a multitude of disease. And to circle back to cancer in particular, so nicotine, um, does look like it is a driver itself of the process that leads to cancer. And uh, inhaling it might have different consequences than uh, getting it through other routes. And so a lot of work still needs to be done there. Um, and so far on the e-cigarette side, when we have looked at different cancer, mo cancer models, the e-cigarette inhalation looks like it is driving uh, tumorigenesis, so cancer development and cancer growth. So, you know, even though a lot of people, you know, believe it to be safer and that, you know, really hoping that the cancer being driven by regular cigarettes is not going to happen to the same degree, um, there is a lot of concern that, you know, the chemicals inside the e-cigarettes are going to drive it anyway, but it might be different cancers. You know, nicotine is not harmless. Nicotine is probably one of our most effective uh, horticultural pesticides. <laughs> uh, and so, so it's a poison <laughs> and it's marked that way. Um, and yet we uh, allow it to be smoked. Uh, and we're, we're putting it at very high concentrations in, in products that our kids are using. Uh, I mean, it's unconscionable. Mm -hmm.